the past decade, we see a rise in organizing through social media platforms and a, a rise in online organizing. Um, now, there's been a lot of criticism discussion that it's not really enough. Um, what are your thoughts on this? And do you think there is still a need for on the ground work and organizing on the ground? Yeah, for sure. Um, so at Lead Now, we actually try and incorporate the best of both worlds. Um, we see our online platforms and online petitions and different actions that people can take online, whether it's as simple as liking and sharing a social media graphic um, or a video, or whether it is you know, taking an extra step to send a letter to their members of parliament or their representatives or signing a petition. Those are really easy entry points for people to get involved, to become aware of issues and uh, start to take action. They're quite simple actions for people to take, mm -hmm. but we certainly don't stop there. Um, it's very important for us to understand that people want to engage at lots of different levels as well. And so as they become more involved, as they become interested in issues, um, we're able to sort of bring them up a ladder of engagement, identify people who have taken lots of actions with us online, and start inviting them into doing actions with us on the ground. And so we'll invite them to host a community gathering or a community event where we engage our community and figure out what their priorities are and really start to listen to them and, and set out you know, what, what they think is important and what they think Lead Now should be focusing our attention on and our efforts. Um, and we'll also mobilize people around you know, bringing the petitions that they sign to their members of parliament face to face, mm -hmm. uh, setting up those face to face meetings, having those conversations, um, and all the way through to having really big rallies as well. Um, we just saw that a couple of weeks ago around the organizing we've been doing around C51. It's been sort of a full scale campaign that started with an online petition and ended up with, you know, thousands and thousands of people in the streets in over 70 communities across the country. So they're all very important. Um, both, both of them are very important and very complex but we see the one easier um, method as a way of getting people engaged and getting them involved so that we can get them involved more on the ground. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Um, you might want to take off your name tag. Sorry, I just oh. forgot to tell you. It's okay. It's okay for the first one. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next one I'm going to ask is about um, uh, so strategic voting, and then I'll do the youth one last. Okay. Okay. Um, So uh, what is the importance of strategic voting and um, what is the importance in the upcoming uh, federal election? Um, yeah, so we saw in 2011 the Conservatives under Stephen Harper got their strong, um, what did he call it, uh, a strong, clear mandate um, for a Conservative government in Canada. Um, and th but that was actually based on only 39% of the popular vote. It was also based on, you know, the difference of about 6,000 um, votes across a dozen or so key ridings. Um, and so for us, we looked at that and we said, well, that's not fair. It's not actually very democratic and it's not representative of the broad spectrum of diverse opinions in the country. And so in order to kind of counteract that, we know that through legislation passed last year with the Fair Elections Act and we know with the redistricting of our riding boundaries, that it's even harder, it's going to be even harder in 2015 um, for progressive voices to win, um, especially in ridings where vote splitting is a reality that often lets conservatives come up the middle because you know some of us vote green, some of us vote NDP, and some of us vote liberal. And so that just you know spreads, up, spreads apart the field and allows um, the conservatives to win and get elected. So um, it's really important for us. We talked to our community. We did a couple of different rounds, both online and again um, in person, to figure out what they wanted, um, how they saw a way forward for the 2015 elections. And um, strategic voting is what we've come up with. So we've launched our Vote Together campaign. Uh, we're trying to focus our energies in the key ridings where we can most make a difference, where conservatives are most vulnerable, um, to see if we can unite the progressive vote behind a candidate that has the best chance of beating the conservatives, thus getting rid of the conservative majority. Okay. This is hard to do in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing really well. <laughs> okay, the last one is gonna be with, where's my youth question? Yes. Uh, okay, cool. So in the past couple of elections, we see that the voter turnout, especially in the youth, is extremely low. Um, what is What are some strategies that yourself and through Lead Now are using to engage with that population and to make them more politically active? 
Yeah, so um, we're, again, that's where actually having a really strong online presence and a strong presence on social media really comes in handy because that's where we know that a lot of that demographic are hanging out, that's where they live, that's where they exist and have relationships um, and talk to each other and share information. And so um, really being conscientious that the campaigns that we're running um, have that kind of visibility, that it's engaging people in that way. Um, and also supporting some of the other get out the vote uh, efforts that we're seeing happening across the country as well. Um, we've got lots of allies in this in this campaign, lots of people who are like-minded and have a similar understanding of what the problems are and what the solutions can be. Um, and part of that is really engaging youth voters. There have been some studies coming out about how um, really the youth vote is uh, tends to lean more progressive and really could make a difference if they're proper, you know, if they're um, actively engaged and, and activated and mobilized to to go out and vote. So um, yeah, that's, we're really looking forward to engaging in that way and having them participate, uh, having youth participate. Most of our staff is part of that demographic as well. And so we've got lots of influence um, in terms of our own peer groups of being able to, to get people involved and understand that, you know, this is a really key moment and it's time to get involved. Yay! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. A <laughs> lot easier than I expected.